Okay, I had a request to do a kind of a, a beginning Microsoft Excel, um, just kind of a start to finish kind of thing. So the first thing I want to go over is when you create a new Microsoft Excel document, it says book one or two or whatever, have, however you have, many have opened. Um, this is a workbook. A workbook is kind of like a binder. Inside your binder, you have worksheets. For example, here I have sheet one, sheet two, and sheet three. Each of these can be a different page. For example, if I type this on worksheet one and I click on worksheet two, it's not there. I'll go back and it's on worksheet one. All right. You can have as many worksheets as you need, I believe. I've never had reached a maximum. Or you can delete these and just have one worksheet. Um, one of the things that I didn't really go over too much is when you're first starting, you know, let's say you want to have employee name, and I just type this in cell B3, and it'll show you the cell up here. And then I want to have, um, let's say, employee number, and then I want to have, um, let's see, hire date. Okay, so the first, and then maybe hourly pay. The first thing you notice when you look across here, you see employee, employee, hire date. The problem is this kind of typed out a little bit farther, and this typed out a little bit farther. So what I can do is I can actually go up and say, as I move my mouse over that line, it turns to the little kind of a cross shape. I can click and drag that, and it, it'll make the column wider. The other thing I could do is when it gets to that cross shape, I can double click on that line and it'll make it as large as the widest thing in that column. Um, I can click it again and you see it made it a little bit narrower. This one's just a little bit wider. Okay, and I can type in Smith, John, um, Jones, Sally, Woods, um, Zuri, uh, let's see. Fernandez, um, Jose. Okay, and now for employee number, I can have one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Higher date. If I put like two, twenty-six, ninety-nine, and then the next one might be four, twenty-four. 55. You see how it's putting in the 1955? If I put in 6702, it puts it in 2002. So it's assuming now for me that I meant 2002. And here I'm going to put um, 91101. Okay. Hourly pay, I can put 5.5, 675. Boy, that's not much for someone who's been there since 1955. Um, 9.99 and 3.25. Let's not be. <laughs> let's do. Let's do 10.25. Um, okay. So now, one of the things that you have here is a basic little table. First thing I might want to do is select these numbers here and click the center button. All right. The other thing I can do is I can select this range of dates here and do format cells and it's set for date and I can choose a different date format. All right. So, for example, maybe I want it to look like that. Let's see format cells date or I can just do 031401. All right, and you can see that that's a little bit easier to deal with, and I can center that. All right, hourly pay. If I select this range here, and I want that to be to show up as dollars. So one of the things that's nice is there's a button up here that just says currency, and I can click that, and it kind of automatically turns it into dollars. Okay, so the other thing that you can do now is I can add some style here. I can either go up here and let's say I want to add a border. Okay, so I have a border around it. 
Now when I go to, you see all these little check boxes and stuff here, not check boxes, but um, grid. When I do a file print preview, it doesn't show any boxes. So you have to remember to add these kind of boxes when you're doing your um, project. Okay, now the other thing you can do is I can select this area here and I can go up to format and there's a thing that says auto format and that lets me choose a style. For example, if I click here and do OK, it looks like that. Okay, so that's kind of a neat way to get an auto format, a neat way to get a format for your table, even if you're just starting. Later on, you can always change it. You can select this and go to your format cells, patterns, and choose a different color. Let's say you don't like purple. You're a, a Vols fan or something. So you can change it to orange. All right. And let's see, what else can we do? Let's say I want to add on something now. Instead of hourly pay, I'm going to put hours worked. Now you'll see that it automatically made it orange like the one before it and set the same color type. But again, I don't have my border that's the same. However, I can click on the cell before it or any cell that I want to have it mirror and click on this little paintbrush, Format Painter, and then click on the item and you'll see that it copied it over. Um, I can do that here as well. Let's see, I'm going to click on this one, just click the paintbrush and then click over here. So it drew the line for me. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select that and copy, and then go over here and paste, and then total pay there. So hours worked, maybe 40, 30, um, 40, and 50. So total pay, I want to take this times this. So I always start a formula with an equal. So I type equal F4, because this is F and 4, times E4. OK, so that gave me a total of $220. Now the other thing that's kind of cool here, if I click on the box here with the formula, you'll notice that there's this little um, cross here. Now the other thing I want to show you before I do this, you see how it says 220 here? But up here it says equal F4 times E4. This is the formula, and this is what actually displays. If I click in the number here, it says 40, 40, 550, 550, 226, 1999. So you see that it's usually the same, but sometimes this will display your formula. Anyway, so I have my box selected here, and it has this little block at the bottom. If I click that block and drag it down, what that does is copies that formula but adjust it each time. Now it's F5 times E5, F6 times E6, F7 times E7. But again, you'll see that I have this problem where I've lost some of my formatting. Um, if I click this and the painter and then click here, that kind of worked, except that I lost my dollars. So I would have to go up and turn my dollars back on. All right? And that's kind of a basic... Um, a basic introduction. I'll, I'll do one more step here. I'm going to type total here. Maybe I'll right align it. And then down here, I'm going to click this sum button. Now what that does is it does sum of G4 to G8. So I could have typed in equal sum bracket G4 colon G8 bracket and hit enter. All right. Now the great thing about Microsoft Excel, I can I'll bold face that is that if I change something like, oh, he didn't work 50 hours, he worked 40, it automatically changed this, which automatically changed this. And, oh yeah, I forgot I was supposed to give Sally that raise, so now she makes 725. And again, it automatically changed that and automatically changed that. So that's one of the powers of Microsoft Excel. All right. So I hope that kind of gives you an introduction. I'm going to go on and do another lesson, and hopefully it'll... Um, continue on here and be inspiring. <laughs> so enjoy. Thanks.